stuff a little uh, on me today when Fender come in telling me what God had done. And <coughs> he laid on her heart and she didn't want to get ahead of God, but if God opened that door, she was going to jump in and amen. And, you know, so uh, she prayed and next thing you know, God opened the door and she jumped in and amen. Now, if she wants to tell you what that was all about, that's between her and the Lord, amen, but I can tell you this, it was good, amen, and you and I, sometimes we've got to realize, amen, that God wants to use us, even in difficult situations, amen, even in times where, where you know, it just seems like it's impossible, amen, that's when God works the most, amen, is in an impossible situation, amen, but you know, there's power in prayer, amen. And yes, there when is. When we begin to draw nigh to God, amen, we'll get tuned in as you would, amen. And as we get tuned in or plugged in, amen, if you're not plugged up to Jesus tonight, you need to get plugged up, amen. Yes, I want to tell you, amen, he's of all power, amen, and he knows best, amen. And he knows you better than you know yourself, amen. Sometimes we say, if we hear about something, we say, oh, I wouldn't do that, but it's soon if something like that happens to us, we end up doing the same exact thing that we said we wasn't going to do, amen. Why? Because we're flesh, amen. We're carnality, amen. Our carnality sometimes and our flesh will overrule our spirit, man. Every time, if you've not been spending time with the Lord. See, there's a key, amen. Yeah. Yeah. When your car's about to run out of gas, you go get gas, amen, and fill it up so you yeah. keep going, amen. you got to be that way spiritually minded, amen. You've got to stay in tune with God, amen. Get close to Him, for He is the potter, and we are the clay, amen. So I want you to listen to this little message tonight, amen. Of course, we'll be coming out of Jeremiah 18. It says He's the potter, and we're the clay, but I want to go back, amen, and, well, we'll just start right there, and then we'll come to this, amen, I'll tell you, amen, and we're going to read uh, the first, uh, probably nine, eight or nine verses, whatever, Lord tells me, stop, we'll stop, but Jeremiah 18, it says, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, arise, and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Aren't you glad that you're at the potter's house tonight? Amen. I'm so glad that I chose to come to the potter's house. Amen. This is a place that we can get fed. Amen. That we can grow together. Amen. And, and God can teach us. Amen. How to be more like him. Amen. And I'm telling you. Amen. If we take his word. The Bible says that faith is, is the substance of things hoped for. But the evidence of things not yet seen. And the Bible also tells us that faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Amen. So it's a good place to be in the potter's house. Amen. It's a good place, amen, to come to the potter's house and hear the word. Amen. But there's times, amen, that we need to stow away and get close to God and talk to God and allow God to talk to us, amen, let his scripture minister to our hearts, amen, and so when we study to show ourselves the fruit, I believe it pleases the Lord, amen, yes. I believe it pleases him when we take time to get along with him, then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he brought a work on the wheels, and a vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, how many know that God took us and formed us with his very own hands, amen. He created us in his likeness, amen. And I want you to know, amen, that God wants us to be like him, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. It says, so he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the Father to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord, behold, as the clay is my hand, as, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, Amen. O house of Israel. 
At which instant I shall speak concerning the nation and concerning the kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. Amen. I want to stop for just a second. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 says, Therefore my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and, and, and pray. Seek my face. Yes. Now, I may not quote it exactly right, amen. Then. But we can turn to it, amen. And look at it and read it from the Bible, amen. But it's telling us, amen. Brother Ken spoke up and, and said that our nation's in trouble, amen. Yeah. You know what our job is? Is to pray. Yes, amen. We've got to pray, amen. We've got to get along. And spend time with God. I'm trying to get there to Second Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people Amen. which are called call by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then my will face I hear from heaven. From their wicked ways, then will, will I, I hear from heaven, heaven and will forgive their, their sin, sin and will heal their, their, their land. land. Amen. God wants to use us as his instruments. Amen. He wants us to be who he's called us to be, amen. And I guarantee you, amen, God, he don't make mistakes, amen. Right. We make mistakes, but he don't. Right. Amen. So it's important that we're fashioned in his hands, amen. It's important that we come to the altar, amen, and ask God to help us and, and, and to strengthen us, amen. To take us and mold us again in his very own image. Amen. And to be what he would have us to be. Amen. But you know there takes a point of lessening yeah. yourself to come to the pot. Just to yield yourself unto the Lord and take time to get along with him. There, There is a, a part of you that has to be pushed aside. Let's just put it that way. Come on. Or resist it. You've got to resist self to spend time with God. <laughs> Amen. So I asked Sandra to look this up because one time God gave me a, a revelation about the clay. Amen. Now you, you may think this is off the wall. Amen. But it's really not. It's off the roof. Amen. Come on. <laughs> Be honest with you, amen. Listen, turn with me to Luke chapter 5. I want to look here at, at 18. It says, and behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find but what way they might bring him in because of the <coughs> multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. You know what the tiling was made of? Made of clay. Yep. You know what we're made of? We're made of clay. Yes, we are. One day God gave me a revelation that was too much of me and not enough of him. I needed to remove some of the clay, amen, so I could get to Jesus, amen. And this is what happened here, amen. If they had to remove some of the clay tiling, amen, in order to get the man to Jesus. Why? Because there was too big of a multitude around that they couldn't get to him by just going through the door. Amen? What did they do? They found a way, didn't they? You know, when we begin to remove self, it makes it easier to get closer to him. Amen? When we begin to push the plate away and begin to fast and pray, all Hades might break loose, but the Bible says that God himself will fight our battles. Amen? 
I'm telling you, when we begin to lessen ourselves, God greaters Himself within us. Amen. When there becomes more of God, there becomes less of us. Amen. It's easier to push the plate away after you've done been pushing it away for a while. It's hard right at first. Amen. You know, when you first go on a fast, the first few days that you're fasting, you about eat the plate. You get so hungry, amen. You desire that itch, that, that, that flesh, groaning out, wanting what it's always got, amen. But you know what we got to do? We got to learn to lessen ourselves. Amen. We got to learn to remove some of the clay. Amen. Get it out of the way so that God can do a new work. Amen. We got to learn to lessen ourselves. Amen. I'm telling you tonight. Amen. That He is the potter and we're the clay. Yeah. Amen. Look with me at Romans chapter 9. Amen. I've got a few verses here. Amen. That I've looked up. Amen. We'll turn back here or we'll go to Mark chapter 4 here in a minute and read a little more or two. Read a little more on that, but uh, let's look right here at Romans. Chapter 9, amen. I'm trying to get there. I didn't have these marked, amen. But Romans chapter 9, verse 21. It says, Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? How many know that you can't exalt yourself? Amen. Oh, you can. But the Bible says when we do that, you know what happens? <coughs> Andrew said it Sunday, I believe it was Sunday. She said first, there's always a haughty spirit. How did it go? Holy Spirit comes before fall. Right? Yep. In other words, when we get prideful, it's more about us and not about Him. Right? When we think we can lift ourselves up, you know, we become a bad lump. Let's just put it that way. Amen. God wants to take us and remold us. And we'll humble ourselves where that he can do the work. Yep. See, he's not going to make you let him do the work. But if you'll come humbly <coughs> and resist that flesh, take a portion of that clay and that's messing you up. Amen? At this point, They couldn't get the man in there that was sick. They couldn't get the Jesus. So they had to go find another way in. Yep. There's times that what we've been doing just ain't enough. <coughs> we need to do a little bit more. Amen. And at this time, they did. They did something he totally off the roof, didn't they? That's a good way of putting it, because they got on the roof and took the tiling away and lowered the man down on the couch into the presence of Jesus. Amen? Which took a lot of effort to get the man there, didn't it? You know what? If we'll put out a little more effort than what we've been putting out, maybe we'll see some results. Amen? Amen. God expects us to do our part, amen. So many of us think that God's just going to intervene and do it all for us, and, you know, and he can and, and, and could if that's his desire. But his greatest desire is, is to see those that which are lost saved, amen. And he's kept you here upon this earth to be a vessel of honor and not a vessel of dishonor, amen. Brought us back to Romans 9 and 21, didn't he? But unless we learn to lessen ourselves, remove some of the flesh, and stole away with Jesus, yes. 
How can we expect God to greater himself in our life? He knows us better than we know ourselves. Amen? Look with me. Look with me at uh, Revelation 2 and 27. Listen. He said, He shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shrivers. <coughs> Even as I received of my Father. You know, we need to realize, amen, that God's in control. Amen? It's not us that's in control. We don't have the power, but he has the power. And he lives within us, which gives us power to be overcomers, amen, and to be who he's called us to be. But unless we lessen ourselves, we cannot be any of his. If it's all about us, he's not going to be any part of it. Right, amen. amen? That's right. I hope that I'm making some sense to you tonight, amen. I know what the Lord has impressed on me to try to, the point to try to get across to you tonight, amen. But I don't know if I'm doing any good at it. I'm trying, amen. And that's all I can do is try to go with what God has given me, amen. But I want you to look with me in Isaiah 64 in verse 8. Now I've got two two verses here that that are actually three that kind of correspond one with another. So listen to all three of them. First one's Isaiah 64 and 8. It says, But now, O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay, and thou art pot, our potter, and we are the work of thy hand. Yes, amen. Praise God. Yes, so who's in control? I'll ask you that again. Who is in control in your life? Come on. Amen. There's a song that a friend of ours, he's done, gone on to be with the Lord. and <coughs> One of his favorite songs, it was a country song. And I don't listen to country songs, but he loved this song. He said, Jesus, it was Jesus, take the wheel. That was his favorite song after... He got born again. Amen. His favorite song was Jesus Take Me. You know, the other day, and Ray didn't know this, but the other day, he said, I want God to be my pilot, not my co pilot. Amen. And when he said that, it ministered to me. Amen. Because God needs to be in control. Amen. We need to allow him to be in control. How many knows he's already in control, but if you don't want him to be, he's not going to make you let him be. Amen. A lot of times our flesh will get in God's way. Amen. I know that's my worst enemy. My flesh. Not the devil. Amen. Because I already know what to do with the devil. Amen. I call on Jesus. Amen. 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 That's what I do. Is Jesus, come on. He won't leave me alone. He bothered me again. And you know, Jesus, come on. He'll take care yes. of it. Amen. Yes. How many know that Jesus is a, a good God? Amen. Yes. 45, Isaiah 45 and 9 says, Woe unto him that striveth with his master. Let the potsherd, how do you say that? Potsherd, yeah. Let the potsherd strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, What makest thou, or thy work? He hath no hands. If you listen to these three verses now, got one more, Isaiah 29. I'm trying to get this. Isaiah 29 and 16. It 
Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that <coughs> framed it, he had no understanding? How many know that God knows the best? See, God took us and he formed us in his own likeness. And he wants to use you in these last days. But if you're not willing to let him do the work in you, come on, he'll not do it. <clears throat> So there comes a point in each and every one of our walks that we have to humble ourselves. We have to say, here I am, God. Come on. How much of God do you have? Do you have all you want or do you want more? I don't know about you, but I want more. So I find myself at times dusting just stolen away and getting along with God and saying, God, I really don't know what to do. God, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how to handle this, God. God, I need you to tell me and show me what to do. And as I humble myself, you know what? God never lets me down. He's never let me down. I've let him down. I put the cart before the horses many a time. and had to go and apologize and ask God to forgive me. Ask him to help me to get things back in order. Amen? Why? Because he knows how things need to be. Amen? He's the God of this universe. Amen? He placed the stars in the heavens. Amen? He's the great I am. Come on. There's nothing that he cannot do. But you know what he won't do? And not go against your will. <clears throat> so we have to realize this tonight. Amen. We have to realize that he wants to remove some of the clock. Amen. Go back to Jeremiah real quickly. Amen. <clears throat> then the word of the Lord came to me. O house of Israel. Cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord, behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand. So are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. I've always said, let's don't wrestle, let's just snuggle. Amen? There's times that the enemy will come along He'll drop something in your flesh. Amen? Something in your spirit. How many know that the enemy is a crafty old feller? Amen? That's what the Bible says. He's crafty. Amen? He's not in control, but he's crafty. Maybe he's <coughs> smart. Amen. Amen. And he will deceive you. He'll make you believe a lie. Amen. He will. I shared a story. I've shared it several times. It's been a long, pretty good while since I've shared it. But about the foothills of Kentucky and the young couple, I believe everyone, but maybe Ken's the only one that had an ambulance that heard this. But it's on my heart. Amen? This young couple and their baby had found a house at the foothills of, the, of Kentucky. It means they're in the valley there. Amen? At the foot of the mountain. Amen? And, <coughs> and, and they had found them a home. Amen? And that, they was moving in and the pastor down the road from the church down the street from the house there, God had spoke to him and told him 
could go and invite them to church. So he goes down there Friday morning and they're unloading and and he introduces himself and says, well, I'm the pastor down here at the church and I just wanted to come and invite y'all to church. <coughs> and by his surprise, the lady and guy had already been talking about coming to church. And they said, well, we're planning on once we get moved in is it's getting it, getting us a home church and getting in church and we appreciate you coming by and inviting us. So he didn't want to hold them up and he left. Amen. Next day rolls around. God lays it on his heart to go down there and see him for the second time. This time he was asking them if they wanted to get saved. So they went. He went down there and. He went in and he said, hey, how y'all doing? Y'all about get unloaded? I just thought I'd drop by and talk with y'all for a minute. And they got to talking and they said, Pastor, it's so funny that you come down here. I just want to tell you, said, I had a dream last night. My wife had a dream. She had the same dream. We dreamed that we was going, coming to your church Sunday and and we was walking down the aisle with our little baby and we was going to dedicate it to the Lord. Both of us had this dream. And, and it just seemed to be so real. And so we're going to be there Sunday. Well, instead of him trying to lead them to the Lord, he let it alone. <coughs> Next morning, Sunday morning, he gets up he He's at church. He's expecting to see them. Well, they didn't make it to church, Brother Ken. There was a big write-up in the paper. Some money, he finds out the reason they didn't make it, the house that they had bought was a drug dealer's house, and the ones that lived in the house had moved out real quickly, and he ended up. they ended up with a house, and the drug dealer in the town there, the big king wheel dealer, whoever it was, amen, Big King man come and sent some of his collectors over to collect their money or kill them. And so the young man and his <coughs> wife and baby were found in the house dead Sunday morning. What looked to be really good was sent by the enemy to keep <coughs> them from being able to make heaven their home. See, I want you to know tonight, amen, that we can't go by our flesh. If our flesh is overruling our spirit, man, then we too need to lessen ourselves. We need to allow some of the clay to be removed, amen? That's where the message come in from the clay tile being taken off so that the man that was sick could be set down into the presence of Jehovah. Amen. I want you to know if you'll just push some of the flesh away and run to Jesus tonight, you too can be made whole. Amen. Amen. God will do a great work just like he did and he said to the house of Israel, read that one verse one more time. <laughs> <clears throat> said, then the word of the Lord came to me, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Said the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. What about you tonight? There's something in your flesh that you're wrestling with? Something that's keeping you from taking time to get along with God. Something that's holding you back from getting in His presence. Anything that's keeping you from getting close to God. You need to get it under subjection. Amen. Sandra said this Sunday morning. <coughs> She says, if there's anybody you're hanging out with, 
that's pulling you away from God, you need to get away from it. Amen? You're not going to help them. They're going to hurt you. Amen? You won't have no influence over them. They've already got influence over you. <laughs> Do you understand? If it's not drawing you close to God, then you don't need it. Maybe it's just your flesh that needs it. But God's telling you, amen, there's a work that he can do if you'll come and let him do the work. Yeah. Come and cry out to him tonight. Listen yourself. Say, God, I'm having a problem. And I don't know how to handle it. I'm going to ask you tonight, anybody got a song? Anybody got a song? Or a song? Amen. What about you tonight? Amen. There's a part of you you feel it's getting in the way. Something that you need to be removed. Praise God. The Lord said if you'll ask, you'll receive. Amen. He said in one place, he said you have not because you ask not. Whatever you need from God, ask Him to believe it. He's more than able to supply every way.
and bend over and pat the smile and get hot. There you go. I gave Christian her for a long time. For over a year. Yes, he's a mega one. He's a great one. You know. Had to give her shots three times a week for really they would have five years. We just did it for a year. We didn't help her a lot. Have to go up there. Well, 
we gave it shots. But they won't hardly let you give it shots against your own Facebook, too. I can go up there how many times a week it is to get your shots. There's three times a week you usually have to go up there and get your shots. But the Christian, they just gave me her medicine. I put a spring right there and I gave her a shot. The insurance started squawking about it. What do you say? Yes, it is. Amen. Thank God who he is in our lives. 